directions. This is, of course, interesting because um, you can ask if the stars are following the galaxy potential or the cluster potential. <clears throat> um, okay, so there's been lots of work done on looking at galaxy outskirts in the ICL uh, for quite a while using photometry. Um, so some of the uh, papers that I like to quote are um, the breaks in color that Montes and Trulio find in um, the frontier fields. Okay, so they find in the outskirts of the BCG in the ICL <clears throat> that the ICL is younger and less metal rich than the core of the BCG using colors. <clears throat> Um, and I did want to highlight this paper, which came out just uh, last month. Okay, this is a paper from Cluj et al., some uh, who are in Germany. And they just published 117 of these. Okay, so they published deep photometry down to about magnitude of 30 for 117 of the local ABEL clusters. If you're interested in intracluster light, make sure you check out that paper. Um, so this is one example, ABEL 2457. Just meant to illustrate uh, the, uh, the nature of the ICL photometry, right? Waves in and out of the um, central galaxies is usually um, uh, found adjacent, well, on top of the brightest cluster galaxy, not always. Um, okay, so if we put together some of the major insights from observations recently, there's a, a, a picture that can start to be built. <clears throat> um, if we ask where the BCGs or where the stars and the BC, where the BCGs are created, uh, we notice that the BCGs are larger and less concentrated the closer they are to the um, cluster center. So this is the X-ray minus BCG offset. So if you're close to the clusters bottom of the cluster's potential well, you're over here, and alpha is this concentration index. <clears throat> so a lower alpha means more concentrated. Okay. So galaxy BCGs are fluffier and larger the closer they are to the galaxy's the cluster's potential well. Um, but also some of these BCGs are found far away from the, from the bottom of the potential well and still kind of look like BCGs. Okay, <clears throat> so BCGs are largely assembled outside of the cluster core, but change as they fall down into the cluster core. How do you define the center? How do you know they are the center? Oh yeah, these are x-ray, and this study here is x-ray. <clears throat> um, so, we could ask, do more massive clusters just have richer groups in which BCGs initially grow, right? Um, or are major mergers maybe happening in a cluster today in which the BCG cannibalizes a second rank galaxy, which was the BCG of some other cluster previously? <clears throat> so that's where um, the BCGs are assembled. What about the stars that make the BCGs? Today, most star-forming BCGs, there aren't that many, there's not that much recent star formation, but if we take the H alpha to mean star formation, most star forming BCGs are found in relaxed clusters. That's the exact opposite as in the, 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 the redshift greater than 0.5 universe. In the higher Z universe, so higher Z universe, it is the unrelaxed clusters that are forming most of their stars. Okay, so the disturbed clusters are in red and the relaxed clusters are in blue. Locally, most star-forming galaxies, BCGs are in relaxed clusters, and that is the opposite when you get to further reg higher regis. Um, people have, um, M Michael McDonald said this using um, um, SZ measurements, and um, Carullo has recently done this using Ys in infrared. So, not meant to be an uh, example of what always happens all of the time, but a little illustration. HST observations reveal a huge Lyman alpha emitting gas halo in this train wreck proto BCG at z equals 2.2. Okay, could this be where all of the stars are initially being formed in what would today be like a coma cluster? <clears throat> um, just to show people have done work on trying to figure out different ways to get progenitors to the BCGs. Um, again, corroborating what we just saw, that 
star formation rates are higher in the past for BCGs. And if we look at the total infrared luminosity, a proxy for star formation, um, that decreases, these are BCGs, that decreases as you go to uh, today, to redshift zero. Um, when you look at sort of redshift 0 0.5 or redshift 1 to now, a mild growth is seen. So lots of star formation early on, and then a mild growth uh, in, in uh, uh, closer um, epochs, more recent epochs. All right, so <clears throat> here we're seeing that the star formation rates go down quite heavily and then sort of peter out. Um, and again, this is shown in a couple of different studies, using infrared and using optical. So how do BCGs grow? It seems like at high Z, there is a lot of action. Some gas accretion, high star formation or specific star formation rates. At moderate Z, there's still some star formation. It's starting to peak out, um, pitter out. And at low Z today, just before today, most of the buildup is by mergers. Um, so some uh, highlights of that, I'd like to show this sparky galaxy. Um, this is an example of, you know, one of these compact pre-elliptical galaxies in the high Z universe forming a lot of stars. Um, some millimeter galaxies, <clears throat> which are in the blue stars, and these compact quiescent galaxies, which are the red stars, overlap a little bit in phase space um, uh, for size and mass. So it's thought that, that the submillimeter galaxies might be progenitors. Yes? I am actually a little confused about terminology. Okay. Yeah. Are there actually clusters at those high redshifts? Yeah, sure. You can call them maybe proto. Do you want to call them proto clusters? I don't know. How are you okay. defining a BCG? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, okay, so um, if you look at models, right, and if you look at, like, um, the halos, most BCGs that uh, um, are the main galaxy of their cluster today have, a, like, um, have been the main cluster for a long time, right? Like, you can trace that merger tree back, right? Um, there's maybe been a couple of large mergers and a bunch of small mergers. Okay, so anything that is the main galaxy of its halo at that time, we could call it the proto-BCG. Regardless of the mass of the halo at that time. So yeah, I don't, I'm not making any... So a cluster can be anything, really. A cluster can be anything. And okay. this, this is really just to paint a broad picture sure, no, here. I understand. Yeah, My work is really on the low Z end. But I'm just yeah. trying to paint a picture of what, how you might build these things up. The main point here is that all like this um, for what are today the massive BCGs and X-ray clusters. Their star formation was a long time ago, right? Petered out to a little bit. Started the um, increase in mass started to happen by mergers instead, and today we're mostly at the end of that. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yes, that's what Michael um, uh, Michael McDonald's work is showing, right? Um, is that when you see signatures of star formation in today's BCGs, it's not a lot of star formation, right? It's a little bit, but when you see that, that's in relax, what are relaxed clusters. This is so it's probably not like the it's probably not like the remnant of the process that actually formed most of the stars, right? All right, there's lots of happening since then. <clears throat> okay, um, so bringing the evolution of the cluster into the conversation, um, if you look at the cluster mass and the BCG mass, okay, um, and separate BCGs in disturbed, which in this figure is red, and relaxed in blue, uh, you find these two uh, functions, which Lavoie et al. interpret as the following cartoon, okay? You imagine having two clusters merged together. That is going to increase 
increased right away the mass of your cluster, but the BCGs haven't found each other yet and haven't merged. Some time has to happen before the BCGs merge together and the mass of the BCG also increases. Okay, so that's from B to C. Okay. So in the distant universe, you have all these, you have these smaller, lower mass clusters with lower mass BCGs. Clusters combine, it takes a little while for the BCGs to combine. Um, and I'm going to highlight Z equals 1.5 as kind of an important transition time. These figures are taken from like um, the candles data. Where star formations, um, where the growth of the BCG is driven by the star formation in situ until about Z equals 1.5 and then merger driven growth beyond that into today's universe. Okay, uh, let's see. So to quote um, reality TV star Nicole Ritchie, I woke up today and I know everything about everything, right? <laughs> we have a picture of how BCGs grow. Obviously that's not true. Uh, some remaining questions that can be addressed about the growth of BCGs and the core of clusters um, are the following and are what can be addressed by the um, survey I've been working on for the last few years. Um, some BCGs are still forming today through major mergers. There's like two examples in our, on our set of 23 where there's lots of large red galaxies that seem like they could easily merge in the space of a giga year. So what is the extent and origin of this merging activity that's ongoing? Um, some BCGs are still forming stars, little bits, but still forming little bits. What is the extent and origin of emission line sources and their connection to the 